peaks of Social Security is that it will have a budget shortfall at some point. Uh, Social Security is not currently taking, enough, taking in enough money for when the baby boomers all retire. Okay? So there's a point when Social Security taxes need to rise in order to pay for everyone. Okay? Um, there's an argument that it's paternalistic. Uh, it forces you to save because we all pay taxes for it and then we receive a benefit. Why shouldn't they just let us decide whether we want to save or not? Okay? This is very much a libertarian sort of, you know, Republican argument. You know, we should let people be free to do whatever they want. It's sort of a freedom argument. Okay? Uh, we already talked in here about the gender bias within Social Security, that it um, treats breadwinner families better than it treats dual earner families. Uh, however, uh, women live longer than men, and so women receive the majority of benefits within the Social Security system. The men retire and then just keel over. Uh, the women continue receiving benefits uh, for some time. Uh, and then the other critique that's commonly made is that uh, there's an inadequate return on your contributions. In other words, if you were to take that money and invest it on your own in the market, you know, if you took all the taxes that you'd contributed to Social Security and invested them on your own, you would have made more. And yes, for most upper and middle class people, that's probably true, right? So for me, probably. I probably would make more if I had invested that outside the market, okay? Um, and the other thing is that, you know, the Social Security Fund doesn't play the stock market, okay? They're not investing, they're not trying to maximize their returns, manageable one. Now, the Republicans who hate Social Security will tell you that it's a crisis and we need to basically get rid of Social Security to solve the crisis, you know? It's in such a bad crisis that we just got to kill it, right? And so, and it's just bullshit and they're just trying to scare you all, okay? It's just, I'm going to be completely biased in this class. It's just bullshit, okay? Um, okay, so that, those are the critiques. Um, the way people sometimes respond to these critiques is one is, you know, it's really not meant to give you the highest return. It's meant to be a baseline to make sure that all of us can retire in dignity, okay? And it's also supposed to be a poverty reduction program. And of course it redistributes, okay? So any program that redistributes means that the upper income people are going to be getting less than they would have been getting in the market, right? Because some of their money is going to poor people, right? That's just how redistribution works, okay? Um, it's also the, a disability and life insurance, as I said. Uh, so 38% of all the benefits in Social Security are going to survivors or to disabled workers and their families, okay? And it's estimated that if you bought a policy like that in the private market, it would cost you $207,000, which is quite a lot, okay? So it's not just about your returns, it's also about this insurance function that it's playing, okay? Now let's talk about the budget shortfall. Um, in 2037, uh, which will be before you guys retire, there is a sh predicted shortfall of 25% of Social Security revenues, what Social Security will need at that time. Um, what that means, though, it doesn't mean, so let's say they, did, they didn't fix the tax problem. It means that the people at that age would get 75% of their expected benefit. Their benefit would be reduced by 25%. So it's not the case that people are just not going to get retirement, okay? It could be the case that they get a lower retirement, but who's the most powerful group in, in America? Okay. Old people. Do you think they're gonna let anyone cut their retirement benefits? I mean, when you guys get old, it'll be the same. You're not gonna let it happen. It's not gonna happen, okay? Um, although I should add, it's not just because it's not just because old people have like magical powers or wisdom or anything like that. It's the AARP, okay? The American Association of Retired People. They have deeply organized retired people. They're the largest um, sort of lobbying group in the country. They have the most money to spend. They have the biggest office. Um, you, when you turn 50, they automatically make you a member. They start sending you ma this magazine, Modern Maturity. I'm gonna be getting it pretty soon. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I'll be a member of the ARP. okay? So yeah, not, so 15 years before you even retire, you're already in there, right? So they're pretty powerful. Okay, 1997 poll, I should, I should get a more recent one. It'll be the same. Do you believe that you will receive any Social Security benefits when you reach retirement age? More than half of people under 30 said, no, I don't think so, 
I'm not going to get any retirement benefits. Total bullshit. Okay? You might get 75% of what you're owed, but you're not going to get nothing. Right? No. Unless, of course, the Republicans get rid of Social Security. Then maybe you will get nothing. Okay? But under it's not because of the budget problems. The other thing I'll say is these estimates of the shortfall are soft. They're hard to make. There's all sorts of things that you have to get right. What's the mortality rate? How, when are people going to retire? Economic growth rate, wages, inflation, immigration, labor force participation, etc. I would add that immigration does a really nice job of shoring up our retirement system, okay? Because um, it brings lots of new workers into the United States, okay? Uh, who can help support um, um, Social Security people. Moreover, any of those workers who work on a fake Social Security number pay into the system but never get their benefits, okay? And so uh, that has an implication. Um, Okay, so if you use different estimates, the crisis disappears. And then I guess the last point I'll say is that um, the Medicare issue is much bigger, and we'll talk about that in our next class. Um, over the next 75 years, the Social Security shortfall will be 0.4% of GDP, so less than 1% of GDP. Did anybody raise the size of their welfare state by more than 0.4% of GDP in your assignment? Yes. How much? You almost <laughs> okay, so this is a small, I mean, it's a lot of money for sure. It's billions and billions of dollars, right? But as a percentage of GDP, it's just not that much. Brian? If you didn't what? Um, uh, nobody calculated it, okay? People just pulled it out of their uh, hat. And, uh, but they did give a number, most people, right? So you should have given a number. All right. Um, the last thing I'll say is there was a proposal. So Bush cut taxes during his era. And the proposal was to make those tax cuts permanent because they were only temporary. Had they done that, that would have cost five times as much as the Social Security shortfall. Okay? So the Republicans were able to, support, to propose that, but they couldn't propose fixing. You know, Social Security is in such bad trouble, they have to get rid of it. Okay? It's just demagoguery. It really is. This is the last slide I want to show you, I think. Oh, no, it's not even close. OK. Um, this is uh, the projected uh, deficit in the United States. And so going all the way to 2080. And, um, and I think this is in percentage of GDP. Yeah, I think it's, so it's in percentage of GDP. And so you can see that Social Security is just staying where it is, okay? It's Medicare, Medicaid, the healthcare programs that are driving up. So that, you know, there's a projection that at some time our deficits are going to be, you know, huge. But really this is the issue, okay? And other spending is staying fairly constant as well. Medicare. And when we talk in class next time about healthcare, you'll see that a big part of the rationale for healthcare was to try and bring down healthcare costs, okay? To provide access, but also to bring down costs.